I'm guessing this is live. I don't really know. People are starting to join. Hello. Yes. Great. Hi, everyone. Um, okay. So just thought I would do a live video basically to sort of explain to you guys how I got into conservation. Um, and I thought it might help some of you, especially if you're at university or if you're at the stage where you're still at school and you're trying to pick what you want to do at university or what A-levels you want to do. Um, hi everyone, that's great. I'm guessing everyone can hear me. Um, okay, cool. So um, I realise some of you guys might not know me. So hello, I'm Lara. I'm 24 years old and I'm a zoologist and a conservation biologist. Um, so I'll just give you sort of a quick background into me. Um, and then we can start talking about the nitty gritty stuff um, and what you guys need to do um, to get into conservation. So um, I've always wanted to work with animals. I've always loved nature. Um, I was really lucky that my family was quite outdoorsy and we'd always go for walks at the weekend or for hikes and things like that. And my dad was so into nature and he really taught me about all the trees and the local birds and things like that. So I've always been fascinated with wildlife. Um, at the time when I was younger, the only career I knew about that you could work with animals was to be a vet. And that's what I wanted for pretty much my entire childhood. So obviously I did loads of work experience at veterinary surgeries and things like that. Um, everything was basically gearing up for me to go into veterinary science. Um, and then I went through a bit of a phase at school and I dropped chemistry A-level. And if any of you are wanting to go into veterinary science, you will know it's pretty much impossible <laughs> to get into veterinary science university uh, without a chemistry A-level. So that kind of shut a lot of doors for me. Um, and back then I, I didn't even know that zoology was a thing at all. Um, so I actually went to university to study oceanography, uh, which is basically, it's kind of like maths, physics and chemistry, and you're learning how to calculate wave propagation and things like that. And it is not what I thought it would be. I thought it was gonna be kind of like geography of the ocean, and I loved geography, um, combined with a marine biology element. So anyway, I did the year in oceanography, didn't really enjoy it. And whilst I was at university, I found out about zoology, which it just sounded perfect for me. And so after that year, I switched course. And for those of you who are a little bit unsure as to what zoology is, um, it's basically a biology degree, but instead of having to do modules like plants, uh, you can really focus on anything animal related. So ecology, evolution, animal behavior, marine vertebrates, um, topics in conservation. I mean, you can you can pick whatever you like. Um, and it was just it was just perfect. And the thing that I loved the most about my zoology course was all the field trips. And I just love being outside and I love that practical element. And if you guys are wanting to get into conservation, uh, one of the things that you need to be doing at university is to be quite clever with what modules you pick. Um, so field work is really important for trying to get that job in the field. Sounds kind of obvious, but some people don't make that connection. Um, so you want to be picking all of your modules based on what you want to do. For me, I knew I wanted to go into field work. So as soon as those optional modules came out, I was on my university system waiting to pick all of the field modules. Um, and because of that, I was lucky enough to go to places like Spain, Belize. Um, I went to Madagascar for six weeks. Uh, I went to Kenya on a field trip. Um, and so everything kind of started from there. Um, anyway, I did my three year zoology course and because I enjoyed it so much and I was thinking about maybe doing a PhD, I then went on to do a master's in research in wildlife conservation. Um, and I did that at the University of Southampton in the UK. And this was a really unique course because basically it's a collaboration between the university and the nearby zoo. So actually all of my lectures were at the zoo and I was taught by their conservation biologists. And basically 
that zoo had links with lots of different countries abroad. Um, so they had on the ground projects that they funded and they worked upon. And because my master's was a master's in research, um, it meant that we were allowed to go to those countries and do our research project there. So basically I got the opportunity to go to Kenya for three months and I stayed at Lewa Wildlife Conservancy in Kenya where I was researching black rhinos, which was just incredible. Um, and it was absolutely the best thing I ever decided to do in my life. And from that master's, I got so many opportunities that I wouldn't otherwise have got. Um, and that some of the questions I get from you guys are, you know, do you have to do a master's to get into field work? And I wouldn't say yes. Like if, I mean, masters are quite expensive now. And if I had just gone straight into field work after my undergrad and used the money for my masters to fund volunteer work, I mean, that's a way to get into field work. But what the masters does is it gives you a leg up over lots of other people. Um, it's something extra that you have, and it also gives you loads of connections. And the thing about conservation is networking. Um, you really do have to get yourself out there. Um, you have to get yourself chatting to people. You know, if you're at university, sign up for conferences, go and see people whose work you're interested in or someone who's studying a species that you love. Get a drink at the bar afterwards and go and chat to them. Um, you'll be really surprised by how much work is done at events like that. And you know, if you get on with that person and you manage to give them that your contact details or you manage to get theirs, that's one more connection that you've got. And you never know the next time they've got a job free, they might think of you. Um, so that's definitely one of, one of the top tips. Um, just networking and just be confident even if you're not that type of person that likes to go out and, and make conversation just pretend you are I mean they don't know any different do they um, but yeah so I, I finished up my master's in 2018 and I really don't want you guys to feel like I've made it and I know everything and like that's that's not the case at all and actually this time last year I was working full-time in a restaurant just after graduation um, because I needed money and I wasn't getting jobs. But the fact is that I was applying and I was getting experience in what people wanted to see on my CV and things like that. Um, and I think one of the things that really helped me personally was actually this Instagram. So I set it up maybe, I think it was two and a half years ago now. It was in between my undergrad and my master's. And at the time, it was literally just something for me to put my photos there, photos that I'd taken on research trips and things like that. Um, and luckily, it kind of took off. And I think my Instagram and all the blog posts that I do and my website has been a big help in actually getting me interviews. With conservation, you'll find that you apply for a lot of jobs, you don't hear back. You apply for a lot of jobs, you might get an interview, but you probably don't land it unless you've been in the field for a couple of years. Um, but I think having something different, so like my Instagram and my blogs and the things that I write for my website, it just gave me that little edge over someone else um, who didn't have it. And yeah, I might not have got the job, but it landed me an interview. And every single interview that you have, um, I mean, you're, you're learning. It's, interviews are a massive learning experience and you just get an idea of the type of questions that people ask you, what kind of answers they're looking for, um, and also like what your strengths and, and weaknesses are. And you never know that the next interview you get, you, you might land the job. Um, so that's also really, really important. Um, so I've got loads of notes because I didn't want to miss anything out. Um, but yeah, the other thing I wanted to say was just try to build up your CV. Um, there's probably a lot of you watching who are maybe just out of university and you're, you're struggling to get that job because conservation jobs they often ask you to have at least two years of working experience but then no one gives you that working experience so it is a bit of a catch-22 um and 
you know, a lot of the time to get that experience, you do have to do volunteer work. Um, and you don't have to do that abroad. There's lots of organisations that you can work for here in the UK that keep everything low cost. Um, but there's also ways in which you can fund that volunteer experience if you need it. So, for example, I worked in that restaurant for six months. And by working in that restaurant, just for that short period of time, I saved up a lot of money. Um, so in terms of getting that experience, I would just say get yourself out there. There's certain tick boxes that people want in in terms of their uh, employees. And you, you've got to make sure that you are hitting that. There's lots of organisations um, who also give you jobs for short term basis. So things like uh, Operation Wallacea, who I worked for in South Africa, they have expeditions all over the world that only run during the summer. So it's a short two month, three month contract. Um, but those contracts are just chipping away at your CV. They're just adding little building blocks. Um, and if you can manage to get a staff position, you know, often you're only paying for your flights or something like that. And, you know, what, £600 to South Africa, if you're spending two months in the bush, you know, if you were going on safari for two months, you'd have to spend a hell of a lot more than that anyway. Um, so <laughs> it was, it's kind of worth it. Um, and as, as I said, there are ways to fund it, you know, you don't have to just rely on parents or things like that. You know, I worked in the restaurant and it wasn't what I wanted to do. But because I did that, it's led me on to to lots of different things, and I I've I've got where I wanted to go. Um, so there are lots of different ways of of getting to where where you want to go. Um, so just some of the things that I wanted to say in terms of um applying for jobs and stuff. One of the biggest tips I have is don't ever look at the job requirements. Like don't let that put you off if you don't have the experience they're looking for. I cannot tell you the number of jobs I applied for who were looking for a PhD or something like that. And I, I mean, I don't have a PhD, but it didn't stop me from applying. And a couple of those jobs I didn't hear anything from, but others I got an interview. And again, interview is experience. Um, so that's definitely really important. Um, and then just like chatting to people, networking, just, I mean, even through things like Instagram, I've met so many incredible people on Instagram, um, who are really like-minded or who might think of you the next time there's a job or things like that. It's, it's just, conservation is a really, really small world. And especially if you want to go into a specific species, there will be people who have been working on that species for years and years and years. And if you can get to know them, you know, you also get your name out there, which is, is really important. Um, and, you know, even with Lewa, so I originally went to Lewa Wildlife Conservancy for my master's project. And from that, I actually had the opportunity to go back and work for them again. So basically, they managed to raise enough money to fund a follow up project on my rhino research. Um, when I was there originally, it was the wet season and they wanted to have a dry season comparison. And I would never have had the opportunity to do that um, if I hadn't gone out there with my masters and then, you know, met everyone and really got along with them and, and worked really hard. And it is all about the people that you meet along the way um, and everything that you do will sort of lead, lead on to something else. Um, and even the job that I have now. So I'm actually the dolphin research manager and marine conservation coordinator for a project called African Impact, which runs in Zanzibar. Obviously, I'm not in Zanzibar right now. Um, I had to come home because of everything that was happening with the coronavirus. Um, my job is still there. So hopefully when everything picks back up and all the travel restrictions are lifted, hopefully I will head back out there. Um, but I have no experience in dolphin research, but everything that you pick up along the way is is transferable. And the, the reason I even got that job, I actually applied for a different job with that organisation for one in Zambia, which would have been in the bush. So a little bit more like I'm used to with rhinos and elephants and stuff. Um, unfortunately, by the time I applied for that role, it had already been filled. And then I got an email from them two weeks later asking if I'd be interested in the dolphin um, job. So 
um just like little things you just you've got to put yourself out there don't be afraid of rejection um and also don't let the rejection get you down it's it's going to happen in any single um sector that you go into whether it's i don't know accountancy or um whatever you you're always going to get rejection and i think the main thing about getting into conservation is just determination and perseverance you don't let anyone stop you from getting there if you want it go out there and get it and even if that means you have to work in a restaurant for a year whilst you're saving up money so you can do a volunteer job um you know do it everyone has a different way of getting there um so I've just seen a question from Holly. Is your dolphin job paid or just expenses paid? Um, it's actually paid. So I get a stipend, um, but all my accommodation and food is covered. So for a first job in conservation, it, it's it's pretty good. Um, and obviously the cost of living over in Zanzibar is quite a lot cheaper. So the way that I look at it is that if I was living in London and I was having to pay however much money for rent, um, also all my food, um cost of living things like that the amount that i'd have left is pretty much what i'm getting paid anyway so it's 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 pretty good um and you know that this job is going to give me another year of experience which is then going to add on to my cv and you know set me up for for the next application um so yeah it's 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 just about building up your cv and maybe that's slowly slowly um but you will get there. You just can't let anyone stop you. Um, and I honestly think it it is just determination and perseverance that, that gets you into conservation. Um, and, you know, the more things you do, the more people you meet, the more people know who you are. Um, and then you never know, they might contact you if they've got a job or they think, oh, you know, that person would be really good for it. So let me give her a message. Um, but, yeah, just things like that. And then just extra things, you know, like if you enjoy science communication, start a blog, you know, start looking at scientific papers and then translate them into a blog post, which people like the public can understand. Um, start doing extra things, which is going to set you apart from other people. Um, because you will not believe the number of people who, you know, everyone's CV looks the same. So make yours stand out. Um, and also don't be afraid to email people or contact people, but just don't, don't like make it, uh, I don't, I don't know how to say this, but make it stand out. Don't just, uh, people get tons of emails every single day, like, hi, I want to work for you or blah, blah, blah. Um, if you're interested in working with someone who specializes in rhinos, you know, go and read their paper and start with, hi, I was really interested in this paper. Um, I especially liked this concept. I'm currently studying this at university, but is it possible for me to come and help you? Blah, 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 blah. They're far more likely to reply to you than if it's just a, hi, I want to come and work for you. If you've got any vacancies, let me know. Because I mean, they, they probably get millions of emails like that every single day. Um, <laughs> so just try and do something um, that is going to grab their attention really. 100% um, agree, determination and pe preservation, that's how I got my job. Yes, exactly. Um, and I hope you can speak Swahili now. Nina jiwa kidogo. Kidogo sana. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly answer some people's questions that they popped in beforehand. Um, so someone asked, can you recommend any internship opportunities that may translate into a job offer? Um, e so look on websites like conservation careers and environmentjob.com and things like that who specifically list conservation jobs um, because they have volunteer staff, internships, jobs, entry level jobs, everything like that. Um, so have a look on there. And then in terms of whether it may translate into a job offer, I mean, anything that you do could potentially, even volunteering could potentially end up leading to a job if you impress people and you know you, you get stuck in and you have the right work ethic. You, you can make any situation uh, work to your advantage. So absolutely, um, but definitely check out those websites because 
it's so much easier to look for a job if everything is just listed in one place. Um, then there was another question. What are some good ways to fund conservation projects? Um, so this is this is pretty tricky because a lot of the time you have to write grants. Um, but literally Google it. I mean, you can find Google lists of loads of organisations that have specific criteria you have to meet and then at least you can narrow down which ones you can apply for to help fund your project. Um, I'm not entirely sure whether this also applies for people abroad, um, but in the UK, have a look at your local councils as well, because sometimes they have money set aside um, for like young explorers and things like that. So if you apply for that, you can sometimes get a grant. Um, can you put the links anywhere? Yes, Katie, I can. Um, I'm going to try and save this afterwards and then maybe I'll upload it to YouTube or something um, and I'll put the links below there. Um, okay, number three, volunteering for vets. Um, this, I do actually know an organisation for this, so check out the World Veterinary Service. They've got loads of projects abroad. Um, a lot of them are volunteer. Again, like it is quite a lot of money, but you might find something a little bit closer to home as well. Um, or even if you don't want to spend a load of money, check out your local wildlife hospitals because obviously with wildlife, you have no obligations. Quite often you can help out with surgery or at least watch the vets operate on like a badger or something like that. Um, so check out your local wildlife uh, hospitals. Um, number four, what challenges have you faced as a young woman working in conservation, if any? Um, thanks Gus for that question. Uh, so for the most part, none. But I have also worked in countries where women aren't equal to men. So I have come across challenges in that people maybe question your leadership and things like that. And then it's just the way that you handle things. Um, it, that's a really tricky question. Yes, I have come across things um, which um, have been challenging to me, but um, it also could be to do with my age rather than just my sex, because I'm, I'm quite young as well in conservation. Um, and I was in a, a quite an important conservation meeting once and, um, you know, it was quite obvious that people didn't really listen to my opinions that much and they were all a lot older and they were, were all men. Um, but again, that could have just been because I was younger and they thought maybe I didn't know as much as they did. So <laughs> a bit of a tricky question. Um, there are challenges definitely um, in being a woman, but I think that's the same in any career that you go into. Um, how do I get involved in conservation without access to higher education? Um, I think the easiest way to do that, to be honest with you, is volunteering, whether that's in the UK, or whether you go abroad, um, but wherever you are in the world, there are going to be wildlife organisations around. Um, so contact them, get involved, um, and again, just start building up your CV. Um, and the thing with conservation is that, it, you know, you're not just limited to field work. There's so many organisations like WWF or ZSL, so the Zoological Society of London, um, who you can work for an organisation like that and not be out in the field. You know, people need human resource teams and people need accountants and things like that. So there are lots of different ways in. Um, but I also know people who work in the field and who you know have gone in there from a completely different pathway from I have so it is possible it's just a little bit harder especially nowadays because people a lot of people have you know their undergrad degree and they have a master's um so it is just a little bit more tricky if you're coming in from a non-academic background but it, it is possible. Again, just determination and then finding little ways in. Um, so yeah, and then some of my other questions. Okay, this is just a random one. <laughs> Thanks, Johnny Denley. Do animals have taste preferences? Like, does a lion think, hmm, I want some zebra today? <laughs> um, so I can't speak for all the animals in the world, but with my rhino research, I was 
trying to find out uh, what they were eating in relation to what was available on the reserve. And I definitely found that some individuals preferred different species and would completely ignore certain plants and just go for that species, whereas others would do the opposite. Um, so my black rhinos definitely had individual preferences, a bit like us. Um, for lion prides, um, certain prides can specialise in different species. Um, so one lion pride might specialise in hunting buffalo and the other might specialise in hunting zebra. Um, but for carnivores, I think it tends to be a little bit more opportunistic. So as the opportunity arises to hunt, they will. Um, they'll sort of take advantage of, of anything, really. Um, and then this is from my housemate, Matt. <laughs> if you could save one animal from extinction, what would it be? Which is a really, really nasty question because I want to save everything. Um, mm. Okay, well, I think for me, because I've I've worked with rhinos, it's got to be rhinos. Um, I would be absolutely devastated if we ever got to the point where rhinos went extinct because they are just incredible animals. I mean, such gentle giants. And the fact that they are being killed just for their horns is, is really, really sad. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'm very biased, but it's got to be the rhinos. Um, so, yeah. Uh, is there a way to do a master's degree in conservation without a scientific study? Um, do you mean like a research study? Because um, that just depends on what master's you do. So uh, mine was a master's in research. So I had to have a big scientific study at the end of mine to make up for what I was doing. Um, but if you had just a master's in science, um, it will be different. And it also depends on what university you go to. Um, so have a look at the master's course and what the modules are and how they assess you um, and go based on that. Um, but yeah, which place is better for an internship or a job, South Africa or Kenya? Eek, um, this kind of depends on, uh, it, do you know what, it's really difficult. I've been trying to get a job in Kenya for a really long time, but because I'm not Kenyan, it's really tricky for me to get any type of work permit. Um, so the reason I was able to go to Lewa was because the organisations that I've worked with, like my university, have research permits, which allow you to go in to Kenya and, and do your research. Um, it's, it's, it's actually really difficult unless you are a citizen of Kenya to get a job in Kenya. Um, so uh, I think it's a tiny bit easier in South Africa, but it's, it's still pretty hard. So you need to start off maybe with an internship um but then you, it's it's trying to work for an organization that have already got all the research and work permits set up so it's not you as an individual that they're um applying to but yeah um let me see what any of these other questions are um i'm taking a gap here but i can't volunteer or travel because of covid19 what should i do instead Okay, um, well, again, like you don't have to volunteer abroad just to get that experience. I know it's a little bit more exciting sometimes, um, but have a look at your local area, Jade, and see if there's any um, organisations there, like maybe the Wildlife Trust. Um, there's often like small mammal surveys that go on, um, bat surveys. There's always things that you can get involved with at a local scale. It's just a matter of finding it. Um, so definitely have a little look um, locally. Um, and it, again, it will keep your costs down. But yeah, sorry that you can't travel because of the coronavirus. That's, that's really annoying. Um, let's see, any other questions? Can you please save this live? I will try. I will definitely, definitely try. Um, species you're looking forward to study? Ooh, um... I mean, to be honest with you, I, I just love all animals and I'm the type of person where I find everything interesting and fascinating. Um, so if you gave me any animal in the world, I would get stuck in and I'd want to find out more about it and things like that. Um, but I love my rhinos. So 
I would love to go back into rhino conservation and, you know, just carry on studying them. Um, I think they're great. Um, is your research more based on analysing data and creating mathematical models or is it more on the biological side of things? Um, so with my master's research and then obviously the follow up that I did in labour, um, I mean, it's it's trying to work out about a biological aspect or an ecological aspect but because you are trying to find trends in your data it also involves analyzing it um so one of the best things you can do for yourself at university even if you don't enjoy it make sure that you're doing things like stats modules um also gis so nowadays you're you're pretty much expected to be able to work with GIS and create maps and things like that. So even if you're not really looking forward to it, I think having a module in it and knowing how to use it is going to be massively, massively beneficial to you. And if you can show your future employer that you have really good skills in um, stats analysis in R in GIS then again you're you're probably going to get hired over someone who doesn't have those skills um so yeah unfortunately that doesn't really answer your question it, it's both you know to find out about the biological side of things you have to be able to analyze your data and look for trends um so definitely both um Let's see what university did I go to? I went to the University of Southampton for both my undergrad and my master's. Um, I could have changed and gone to a different university for my master's if I wanted to, but the the course that is at Southampton was actually perfect for what I wanted. Um, the master's in research is a really good stepping stone if you're thinking about doing a PhD, and at the time I was. Um, it's also completely unique in the UK in that it is collaborative with that zoo. So I got a lot of information and lectures and um, connections from the zoo, which I wouldn't have got if I had just been based at a university. Um, so I thought it, it was just perfect for me. Um, let me see, let me see, let me see. Hello, hello, hello. Okay, let's go back down to the bottom. If you've got any more questions, drop them below and I'll see if I can answer them. Hi, Will, how are you? Um, what are some degrees that can result in a job in conservation? Um, I mean, anything, literally. Um, ecology, uh, biology. I mean, loads of my friends did biology and they've got a job in conservation. Um, I know people who have done environmental sciences and have got a job in conservation. Uh, marine biology, you basically just need to have a degree where you can get transferable skills that allow you to incorporate it into conservation and and your set um geography you know like anything that's kind of life sciences you you can do and you'll be fine um any good online courses just want to know more about wildlife conservation or any specific animal oh okay um i mean i'm sure there are lots of online courses i i haven't really done any um I actually, this has made me remember one of the other things I wanted to say. Um, Organisations like the IUCN have courses that you can do to actually become a red list assessor. So if you're if you're struggling to get a job and you're sort of, you know, at home, um, you can actually just go on to their website and you can do this course and you have to pass an exam, but then you can become a red list assessor. So you can go out to a different country and you can assess whether a species is vulnerable, endangered, critically endangered, things like that. Um, and again, that's just something something extra to, to put on your CV. So, yeah. Um, in terms of online courses, eh, I'm, I'm not sure. Sorry. I can have a look and then maybe pop some, pop some links onto YouTube or something like that. Um, Tristan, do you think you'd ever work with pangolins just considering there is so little known about them? I mean, yes. Yeah, if someone offered me a job working with pangolins tomorrow, I'd 100% take it. Um, they're incredible. And I think it's it's mad that people know so little about them. Um, I worked with a field guide in South Africa last summer and he has lived and worked in the bush for 
like 45 years and he's never seen a pangolin. So how are so many of them being poached and, you know, taken into the wildlife trade? I, I just don't know. Um, so I'd, yeah, I'd love to work with pangolins. Absolutely. Um, do you have a particular passion for Africa or is that where the opportunities came up? Um, I have an absolute passion for Africa. Um, I've always known that I wanted to work with African wildlife and in the African savanna. And that was also one of the other reasons I picked my masters because they had projects in Kenya that you could get involved with. Um, so it was just a, a, an obvious for me. Um, yeah, Africa, absolutely. Um, I have had opportunities elsewhere, but I've always picked the Africa ones just because I know that's where I want to work. Um, but realistically, anything that you do is transferable and you also don't worry about specializing in what you want to so i know so many people who you know really want to get into elephant behavior research or something like that which is is quite tricky um but you know the number of people whose masters is completely unrelated to their job or whose phd is also completely unrelated to their job now it's staggering so don't ever feel upset or pressured if you're not um, specialising in, in what you want to right now, because in the future, it doesn't matter. You're still picking up skills and you're still learning stuff, which is completely transferable over to what you want to do in the future. Um, what were the findings of your dry season study in Kenya compared to your wet season study? Um, do you know what, Will? I will answer that question another day because is a long answer and a lot of the people who are listening probably haven't heard about my wet season study um but I will probably I think I'm doing a Instagram or a YouTube session for uh Roxy the zoologist at some point within the next two weeks where I will be talking about my rhino research um so if you tune into that then I will let you know um is it easy to get into zoology from an engineering background? Oof. Um, I have no idea. Um, I guess you would have a lot of skills that would be quite useful in conservation and the zoological field. Um, but then you're lacking a lot of the specific knowledge that we learn in a zoology course. So I'm, I'm actually not sure how that would work, I'm afraid. Um, you would probably have to do some like other qualifications or like a little online course or something like that, um, or get your way in through your engineering background and then work your way across the company um, to what you want to do eventually. What would your top tips be for starting your own documentary series? Mm. Um, I think coming up with really important storylines or something that's really compelling and something that makes people feel emotion um try and come up with things that people haven't seen before um or, or just like be creative you know like there's a lot of people out there who are trying to make documentaries and things like that and a lot of it will have been done before but if you can put a different spin on it then it's it's going to stand out from from what other people have done I'm going to be doing a BSc on in zoology. Can I still do a master's in research? Absolutely. Um, that's what I did. So I did my BSc in zoology and then I went on afterwards to do my master's in research. Um, if you want to do your master's in research though, make sure you're picking your fieldwork modules because that will really help you. Um, and it's 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 basically your, your bread and butter. So you want to be doing all your fieldwork stuff. Um, your dissertation, I mean, you're going to have to do a, a really big dissertation for a master's in research. Um, so make sure you start getting that experience in and it will help you get into that master's in research. What made me want to do this? Um, <laughs> I just love animals. I love wildlife. Um, and I just know that I always wanted to work with them, um, and protect it. And yeah, my life has just led me in this pathway and it's, it's just perfect for me. It's yeah. <laughs> Um, any tips for getting into conservation with a politics degree? Um, I think just, uh, try and get involved in more of like, uh, more of the trade side of things. So, uh, 
like things with like the international wildlife trade so have a look at traffic um because they use a lot of um politics and like law and things like that to try and argue against wildlife trafficking or the illegal wildlife trade or the illegal pet trade um so if you can get into your conservation organization that way and then again see where it takes you um i think that's probably your best your best way forward um so yeah Hi, I'm from France. Do you think it's possible to go to the University of Southampton? Uh, yeah, absolutely. They take loads of international students every single year. Um, and there are a few French people on my course. So yeah, absolutely. Um, oh, hi, Georgie. So people asking about online courses, apparently Future Learn is a good one. So have a look at that. Um... How would you be able to learn how to do GIS as I haven't come across any modules that teach it in my zoology course at the moment? OK, have a look at the geography section. Um, your university might be a little bit different from mine, but we were allowed to choose like one module that was outside of our um, like biology zone. So have a look at geography and see if they've got one. If not, download QGIS and literally just watch YouTube tutorials. Um, I taught myself GIS from doing that because I had like one lesson on it in my master's. Um, so yeah, I mean, <laughs> you can find everything on YouTube nowadays. So just do that, really. Would you recommend doing a year abroad or a year in industry at uni? Um, I think it depends on, on, on what you want to do, really. Um, for me, it wouldn't have made sense um or it wouldn't necessarily have like added much to what I was doing but then I also know people who have done zoology and have done a year in industry and went to places like Australia um and they I mean they had an awesome time so actually um Roxy the zoologist if you go onto her Instagram and just ask her a question she did a year in industry so she'd be able to answer that question a little bit better than me um but I guess it would be good in terms of getting your experience up if you've had your year of work in the middle of your zoology degree. That's, I mean, that's great. So I don't see how it would hurt at all. Um, what is my favourite animal? It's got to be rhinos. Um, so <laughs> actually, before I started working with rhinos, I loved leopards and I still love leopards. But having worked so closely with an animal where you're literally at the stage where you get to know their individual personalities and things like that I uh, yeah I just it yeah amazing black rhinos absolutely um okay is your current job completely in the field or are you split between field work and home um okay so I because I manage a uh, a research project my time is 100% split. Uh, we go out on the boats four times a week researching dolphin behaviour and how it's affected by tourism. Um, but because I'm the manager, it also means that I've got a lot of reports I have to write and things like that. So it's 100% split. Um, but to me, you know, getting to go out on the boats four times a week is absolutely great. Um, so yeah, I think that answers your question. Um, how many people do you know? How did you decide between a research master and a master's in science? Um, so I chose the research master's because at the time I was thinking about doing a PhD afterwards. Um, and it's not completely ruled out. Um, I would still be open to doing a PhD, but just not yet. Um, so a master's in research is like a perfect little stepping stone between your undergrad and between a PhD. So th for me, that was the obvious choice. Um, but obviously a master's in science is also great. Um, it's just a little bit different. Um, okay. Was your trip to Africa sponsored by the BBC? No, no, it wasn't. Um, what am I doing during this lockdown? Going crazy. <laughs> uh, no, I just, I mean, to be honest with you, I've only been home for like a week and a half. Um, so I've been kind of lazy. I've not really done anything yet. Um, 
but I'm going to use this opportunity to really, you know, get stuck in with my social media. I'm going to write some blog posts. Um, there's a documentary that I want to film. So I'm going to put together a proposal for that and then hopefully see if I can contact some people and see if anyone's interested. Um, and then, yeah, just kind of use this time for myself. Um, go out for walks with the dog, you know, things like that. Um, hi, I was meant to be traveling to South Africa in July to study a course on being a field guide. After completing the course, I want to get into conservation. What's your opinion? Yeah, absolutely great. It, were you doing a for Gaza? Um, I mean, that's a perfect way to get in. Um, and for lots of volunteer programs in South Africa, they also, you know, they really need field guides to go out and help their students collect data. So it's, it's absolutely perfect if you want to get into conservation that way. Um, do you have any tips for photographing in the field with biologists without getting in the way of their work? Um, do you mean like taking pictures of the biologists or just kind of being in the field with them? Um, for me, obviously, I was in Africa f for my work, but I always had an opportunity to stop and take photos. Um, so that was fine. In terms of photographing in the field, like photographing a biologist I guess as long as you've spoken to them and you've sort of explained what you want and then you've come up with some agreement between yourselves I mean there's not really not really a problem with that um your photos from Africa are amazing oh thank you Josh that's really kind uh what would you suggest as a starting camera for someone wanting to do some wildlife photography um so I started off with just a little point and shoot um so I think I had a Panasonic Panasonic Lumix I think it was like FTZ 330, something like that. Um, and it was perfect for, you know, when I started out and I just used to play around with it. It had a really good zoom and things like that. It was only as I started to get more and more into photography that I changed my camera to a Canon. Um, so it kind of just depends on your, your budget really, but also you don't need to change your camera equipment until you're actually being limited by the camera that you have. So whilst you're just starting out and like learning, I think, a little point and shoot is it's pretty good it's also a lot more reasonable in terms of price because you don't have to get into the whole buying different lens to change the lenses and things like that um but yeah have, have you ever thought of working or researching tigers i mean yeah if you want to give me a job absolutely i'll come and research tigers for you um that would be awesome can you please save the live session i will do my best alina um and i will maybe upload it to youtube if anyone wants to watch it later um, cool. Okay. Um, I think that's probably answered most people's questions. Um, oh, let me quickly answer the camera one. Um, so I have a Canon 750D and I have a Sigma 150 to 600 mil lens. So it's quite heavy, quite big. Um, when I was working at that restaurant, it was a whole month of my salary. Um, so <laughs> it was also kind of expensive, but it was absolutely worth it. And I, I love it. Um, and if you're really serious about photography, I would recommend buying it 100%, absolutely. Um, so that's the equipment I've got at the moment. And for now, it's great because for me, I love the photography, but I'm not trying to become a wildlife photographer. It's literally used as like... Um, just like a tool for me to help you know like share messages about species that are in trouble and things like that so I mean I think for now like, I'll be pretty good with with my camera equipment um but yeah thank you second year zoologist finding this super useful awesome I'm really glad to hear that Chloe um so yeah okay if um anyone else has got any more questions please feel free to send me a direct message and I'll do my best to answer um but yeah thank you guys so much for watching and i will do my best to save this and probably try and upload it to youtube at some point um but yeah i hope it was useful uh, especially for those of you who are at university and sort of thinking about your next stages um again just have determination uh perseverance and yeah just try and do something that sets you apart from other people something that's going to make you stand out um Okay, awesome. Have a really lovely evening, everyone. And yeah, enjoy being in lockdown.